what are your experiences, good and bad, with law enforcement, especially coming from somebody who worked in a DA's office? Both sides, and grew for, up in Brooklyn. For, and grew up in Brooklyn for, you know, you worked in a DA's, DA's office, but now you're a criminal defender, um, and, and, you know, especially, like, concerning, you know, like... Well, um, quite honestly, my experiences with law enforcement up until I got into the DA's office were quite negative. Um, as a young kid growing up in Brooklyn, I've been accused of crimes that I didn't commit. Uh, I've been, uh, I've had summons written up for things that I didn't do as a kid growing up. I've been accused of being a drug dealer and carrying guns all before I was 15, growing up in Brooklyn and going to school in Manhattan. When I got to college at Hampton University, where I went to, I've suffered numerous pulls o- pull, uh, pullovers by uh, highway police in the state of Virginia, Maryland, North Carolina, traveling and during the uh, during the holidays and literally being pulled over, me and my college buddies and having our whole entire, imagine your mom making this great meal for you to take back to the holidays, cake and stuff, and a highway guy pulling you over wanting to inspect your car for drugs because you young black males traveling up and down 95, 13, and they we're sitting on the side of the highway as these highway police search our car search our car. And I had negative experiences uh till I got to the DA's office and I continued to have negative experiences in the DA's office, but it was more from a from a bird's eye view. But then I began having some positive experiences in that I met some decent police officers when I was a member of the gang unit in the Brooklyn DA's office. I met some officers who treated people like human beings. And it was a job, but it was more than a job than that they realized they were dealing with human beings. But I also met police officers who confirmed uh, for me what I thought was a problem. You know, I, that was from the prosecutor's stand, standpoint. I've also had situations in the, as a DA. I never forget, uh, I was screening a case one day. And the facts were, if I remember correctly, um, it was, this was an observation by drug team who had chased a suspect through a, a dual, a shared alleyway in Flatbush. And they lost the suspect. And they wanted to just check this random family's house backyard to see if he was hiding there. This family wasn't related to it. They had no attachment to the crime. There was no good Samaritan law to require that they um, let these police officers in. So the police officers knocked on the door to get in. This family said, thanks, but no thanks. We don't know what you're talking about. This officer, young officer, goes back, gets his sergeant. They kick in the door. They beat the crap out of the two sons and the 70-year-old father, and they arrest him. And they charge him with assault on a police officer. So me and my infinite wisdom just entertaining this cop asked him, uh, where are your injuries? He says, I have bruises to my hand. He says, bruises to your knuckle? He's like, yeah. Those bruises from you punching, right? Yeah. I said, yeah, I'm not writing this up. He's like, what? What do you mean you're not writing it up? You're not writing it up. Hold on. Go into my supervisor and say, listen, we need to chuck this case. This guy's just beat the crap out of these people for no reason. Uh, they call the supervisor. The, this cop calls his supervisor, who then calls my supervisor. My supervisor says, yeah, we're not writing it up. I'm sorry. Um, there was another instance where a cop threatened to come down to ECAB with his gun if I didn't write up the case the way he wanted it. Um, I've seen police officers lie, you understand. I've seen police officers lie in what they've told district attorneys. I've seen district attorneys with the, those who aren't layered with these life experiences just eat up whatever the cops tell them without even, you know, uh, questioning it. But I also saw some cops who realized nonsense and they tried to be as human as they possibly can. Unfortunately, uh, law enforcement, particularly in New York, is such a strong power unit that even the good cops who want to make a difference is kind of hard to stand up because of that brotherhood that goes on there. Just like these police officers rag on these kids from urban areas for the no snitching policy, they practice it like no one else. Uh, the police department, New York Police Department, is no snitching. Um, 
and uh, so I, I, I've, unfortunately for me, I've a small percentage of good cops, uh, a, a larger per percentage of indifferent ones who are sometimes worse to, worse to me, um, and uh, a healthy amount of callous, uh, racist, um, elitist police officers as well. Um, I, I don't, um, I, I have no delusions. Like, it's a job, it's a numbers game, it's about stats. You have people who have to pay for their kids' tuition, and they have to live life off of someone else's arrest. And when you have that in the industrial complex and environment that we live in, humans are, are, are prone to frailty. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't... I, I, uh, I treat police officers just like I treat anyone else. I don't give them any extra credibility because of their job or their function as a police officer.